beautiful souls. Welcome to this Ascension Energy Update for the year of 2023. In this video, I'm going to share some personal downloads around what to expect from the energies of this year. Also, some specific Akashic guidance to help us through 2023 and the, the specific spiritual qualities that I'm being shown are going to be really, really important for star seeds in particular to develop this year. Okay, so let's start with an eagle's eye view of the energies of 2023. And rather than go into great detail here, I'm going to really, really encourage you to check out a couple of my previous videos. There's one called Energies of 2021, and then also the December Solstice 2021 video. Both of these really lay out a, a very overarching view of the ascension process that the Earth is going through right now, and that'll give you a much deeper and more detailed understanding. But just to give you a very short, brief overview, um, we're definitely going into this dark night of the soul of, of the collective right and by the collective i mean humanity but also planet earth herself okay because i think there's one thing that we need to be really really aware of and that i i think a lot of people kind of miss the boat on this one is that humanity and mother earth are inseparable, right? We are actually like cells in the body of Mother Earth, right? And so there's this conception, I think, that is really, really popular these days that we're separate, right? You hear this all the time, especially among the environmental movements that we're we're destroying the Earth. Yeah, there's a lot of truth to that. We'll we'll get into that in a bit, but you know, it's it's also we're destroying ourselves. So we need to be really, really clear that we and the earth are inseparable. Okay, so that said, at this point in time, we're, we're facing this crisis, right? We can all feel it. And I feel like the new age for a long, long time has really chosen not to see that and certainly not to the extent to which it is happening on the earth okay so there's one thing to take a really uh, you know a positive outlook on things on the universal level on the level of the eternal everything is always okay and that's really important to understand too right no matter what happens going forward spiritually we're always you know our home is really the eternal um, but we're also manifest in this world. And so it's also very important to be very aware of what's actually going on in the world, okay? And it's not all love and light as we know. And what I'm being shown here in 2023, I have just gotten this, <laughs> this real revelation that, you know, things are actually more of a crisis than any of us really realized, okay? I feel like it's important for all of us to recognize that just being human at this time on planet Earth, you are and have been dealing with a lot of trauma, like an incredible amount of trauma. The, the, the state that the Earth has been brought to right now is a crisis state. We need to be really, really clear on that. And at the same time, have this hope okay because i feel like i you know there are people out there there are really accomplished gurus out there even who are already saying it's the end it's like you know there's there's really no hope for life as we know it to continue we're headed for nuclear annihilation and it's a done deal and better prepared to transcend right spiritually and you know i feel like to each their own, right? And, and and that's part of this crisis point that we've come to right now. So I will circle around back to that, but I wanted to bring this image forward again. I have shown this before. If you look at the, the last the 2021 December solstice, it really explains what this is about. Um, but I'm bringing it forward again because I feel like it really illustrates exactly where we're at. And also, it coincides just beautifully with a particular Native American prophecy. It's from the Anishinaabe people called the Seven 
fires prophecy. I'm going to leave a link in the description to the Wikipedia explanation on that. Um, but very briefly, it says that there will come a time where, and they call it the light-skinned race, I think it's those who, no matter what skin color, those who have kind of gone on this Western path, which is most of the world right now, okay, um, will have to make a choice. And it'll be a choice between two paths. We're going to be given this choice. And they say one will be a black and charred path that will hurt your feet, right? And another will be a green and lush and inviting path. Okay, so the prophecy says if we take the wrong path, it's going to choose, it's going to result in incredible suffering for all of humanity. If we choose the correct path, it will lead to a, a time of peace and prosperity for all human beings. Okay, so I'm feeling like this 2023 is this, we've come to that point, we've come to that point of choice. Now, in the article, what it says is that the prophecy says that we don't choose either path, that we choose to go back to the ways of the ancestors, the ancestral path, okay? And that's actually the way forward. And so what I've been shown in this painting, which I feel like I, the painting came forward independently of that prophecy, right? But it, it, it dovetails so beautifully. What I'm seeing here is first of all the split right between light and dark but also beyond that you can see the three paths there's this dark path here this is actually the greed and inviting the white snake here is how i'm seeing it and then the third path would be the ancestral path which is the the the, the two snakes in the ouroboros symbol in the background okay so what i'm seeing is this path here is the path of despair this path here, I've been told, is the path of longing. And this path here, if we take the the path behind it, right, and, and that's going to be the path that leads to this beautiful new dawn, okay? Um, going into 2023, it's becoming more clear, right? The choices that are before us and the potential timelines, okay? These are all timelines that we are headed for pretty much you know all three of them and what i'm seeing is that these two timelines that the, the black and white snakes are actually in the forefront so these are the easier paths to take and they're the ones that if we continue without some kind of shift this year especially it's, it's going to take one or both of these paths, right? And this would be the path of nuclear annihilation at this point, right? Because that's the path of real death and destruction that will be continuing the whole cycle and um, path of destruction, like the environmental destruction that we've seen, uh, just the, the human rights travesties, enslavement, all the stuff, okay, that's going to inevitably, the end of that, if you follow that path to its logical end, it is a nu nuclear annihilation, okay? So that path is definitely active right now. We have to be aware of it. I feel that we have to really be able to look that in the face and say, hey, that is, that, you know, we're on track for that. Um, this other path here, the path of longing, what I'm seeing shaping up with that, that's the path of transhumanism. Okay, and so if we, you know, manage to, uh, if we manage to avoid nuclear annihilation, the next step is transhumanism, right? And it's, um, and there's a lot of reasons behind this. A lot of this has to do with the law of gender, right? But um, basically, the ancestral path, what that does is it maintains the integrity of the DNA, it maintains the integrity of life and the continuity of life. Okay, so basically we're looking at, you know, are we going to support the continuity of life, right? Or are we going to go and end up on a dead end pathway? Okay, and this being, I'm really seeing this as transhumanism. It is the path of longing, right? Longing for life. And, and to me, this is the more dangerous of these two paths. And we're on both of these paths right now. 
way further along on these paths than I even realized until very, very recently, okay? Um, so the reason the transhumanism is actually the more dangerous is because it does appear inviting, okay? And so uh, moving forward, especially into 2023 and beyond, we're going to be shown, in fact, it's already... <laughs> It's, it's already well, well underway, right? Um, we're going to be given lots and lots of choices. And in fact, a lot of them may actually and have been uh, almost pretty much forced upon us and in, in that, that are pushing humanity into that, that transhumanism path, right? And what transhumanism is, it's, it's merging man and machine. It's merging man and artificial intelligence, okay? And the reason that is, I feel, ultimately a dead end is because spiritually and the, the, the natural way that things evolve, right, um, we're meant to have the spirit and the mind and the body all working together. And when, and that is, that is the created world that is direct from the creator right the creator made us as human beings and gave us this ability to create okay um that is one of the superpowers of the human being and but with that we have free will choice right we can't be a creator being without free will and so this is the crisis point. This is the test point. And this is what I'm being shown around this, is that this goes well beyond just humanity. And it's so important to understand, okay? And is that humans are part of the consciousness of the planet. We are the part that embodies and enacts that creative consciousness that is here to assist in bringing the consciousness of the entire planet uh, to a higher level and there's that spiritual principle as above so below right so we do it within our own selves and as a critical mass of us attains that ability to transcend you know the lower chakra drives and operate instead of from the fear center uh, to begin to operate from the heart that enables the planet to also have a similar expansion of consciousness. And as the planet and others like her, okay, Gaia has brothers and sisters, as our planet and others like her are able to make that transition, it assists another higher level in the universe, okay? Um, so this isn't just a question of will humanity survive or even will the earth survive? It is part of the the rising of consciousness of the entire universe okay so it there's really more happening here than 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 we tend to be aware of okay and so this is why i personally have a lot of hope is that i really have seen that there are other beings out there that have made this transition. We feel them, they're our star family, right? And that I, I'm being shown that it's, it's part of the maturation process of a planet um, is seeding it with human consciousness. And then that human consciousness matures to a point where it comes to this testing point. This is a coming of age as well as a birthing, right? In the coming of age of humanity, it, it's, it, there's an initiation, okay? And it's, you know, can we pass the test of being able to handle our own creative creative ability or can we pass the test of being given free will and to use that free will in a way that is supportive of life okay of life expanding consciousness this is the test that we're in right now this is the initiation that we're in and to pass that initiation that is the, going to be the birthing of the new golden age right but we got to pass through it we got to pass through that portal first that dark night of the soul portal 
that's where we're at right now. I'm sure you've heard the stories of people who had, you know, were in a, a really bad crash or they were on the operating table or something and they found themselves like they, they began to pass, right? And they, they come out of the body and they're taken to this place and they're given a choice and they're told you can pass on and move on to the next life or you can go back. Right. And of course, we don't hear from the people that choose to pass on, but those who choose to go back, they they come back knowing that they're going to endure some pretty tremendous pain in order to heal from that and come out. OK, and so but there's one thing that always drives them back, and it's that sense of I haven't finished my purpose here. I have not fulfilled my mission. I need to go back because there's work left to do. Okay. And so that's where I'm feeling we're at right now. We're, we're at that point of choice. And there are many people on the planet that have chosen right? Because it's an individual choice and the aggregate of the individual choices is what makes that choice for humanity, okay? So there can be multiple choices going on here, just as there are multiple pathways, just as all three of these pathways right now could be playing out. We could see these playing out over the next few years, all of them, okay? I'm not saying it's going to be necessarily one or the other. Ultimately, in the long, long picture, one of these is going to win out, okay? And that's why the choices made right now are really going to influence the big picture and, and which one actually wins out in the end, okay? So there are many people on the planet right now who have elected, who are electing at the soul level to just be taken away, taken off, okay? Just get me out of here, be me off the planet, I don't want to be here, right? And realize that all death is part of a cycle, right? It's this law of rhythm and the law of cycles. And so it's important right now to not be afraid of death. We'll circle around back to that as well, okay? Um, and, and to recognize that those who choose to pass, that is their sole choice. And we need to really, really be clear on that right? And it may also be big areas of the world, okay? Because once that death engine gets really going, it has the huge potential to be very <laughs> widespread and, and huge, okay? Um, the other one here, uh, again, which is I, I feel more dangerous, right? Because this is just an acute crisis. This one is a systemic issue, Right. And, and there are a lot of people who are going to elect for that because it's the easier choice. Right. Because healing is hard. Healing is can be really, really painful. And if you're a healer and if you've been through any kind of healing process, you know, it could be freaking painful. Just like when you have um, uh, it, when your fingers get really, really cold, right, and numb and frozen, and they start to warm up, whoa, does that hurt, right? It hurts worse than when they're frozen, okay? And, and so this transhumanism offers an alternative that feels easier. It feels painless, okay? And it feels, we're also going to be told it's the safe path, it's safe, Okay, and, and so for the long term, this is the short term crisis that, that we have to pass, right? Um, and, and this is what's going to show up in the next few years. Are we going to actually annihilate the world or are we going to move past that? And um, this then should we move past that and, and leave at least part of the world and humanity intact? Then we're going to be dealing with this for quite a while, right? This pull towards transhumanism. And what that does is there are beings out there, essences out there that have failed this test, but have not completely annihilated themselves. And, and, and they're so damaged that all that they can do is um, kind of sponge off or suck off the energies of other beings, okay? That's why they're here on the planet in order to kind of co-opt humanity and take a ride on humanity, but they, they do it by 
altering and and sponging off of and and taking that soul essence right so what it ends up being is it's sort of like the borg right <laughs> where where it's 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 not a true spiritual wholeness and that's why they the borg wants to keep assimilating other cultures because it it has that hunger to be whole and it it, it just can't because it's been so compromised Okay, that's what AI and transhumanism does. Now, I'm not saying that AI can't be used and it can. You know, we are technological beings, but we have to learn as a species to use AI or any other technology in a way that serves the greater consciousness. Okay, and transhumanism is not that. All right, so then the third path is the path of returning to wholeness and to healing. And that has to be done in the context of renewing and healing our relationship to the whole spirit of the planet and to all of the creatures on it right we have to come back into right relationship with the universe and 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 with spirit and okay so the way to do that i'll share in a little bit all right so this is a, a pretty dire straits that we're in and that's why we're here as star seeds right that's why i incarnated that's probably why you incarnated if you're watching this much you know you have a warrior soul i can guarantee you right and that's why we have you know the the star seeds the the twin flame energy and um you know those who carry that are here to really hold the flame of you know the, the healing spirit here on the world right now and to assist us through this point where we're really on the brink of you know brink of extinction right so i'm going to share a piece of uh, akashic guidance that i tuned in to um my higher self and just asking with everything brewing right now is there really hope and what shall we be preparing ourselves for? And the answer is the furnace, furnace awaits. Okay, this is a quote the furnace awaits. Remember the story of Daniel's proteges in the fiery furnace. Faith got them through. Okay, so this is the first part of the transmission. And they're referring to the story of Daniel in the Bible. Um, and Daniel was the same one as I believe this, the Daniel in the lion's den, but he became a higher up administrator in the administration of Nebuchadnezzar, the King Nebuchadnezzar. And the king had been uh, instructed to build this incredibly huge golden idol, and he was requiring everybody upon penalty of death to worship this idol when, when the music and trumpets blared, okay? And so Daniel doesn't actually show up in this part of the story, but he had three protégés, three young men that he had been mentoring. And when the trumpets blasted and everybody fell down and worshipped this idol, they stood there and they refused. Okay, so this act of refusal to what they knew was not aligned for their souls. Okay, um... And Nebuchadnezzar, when he was told of this, was enraged. He's like, how dare they? And of course, the penalty was death. And he's like, fire up the furnace seven times hotter than it normally is and throw them in. Okay, so that's what they did. They had this great big furnace. And this, it was so hot that the soldiers that were enlisted to throw these young men into the furnace actually perished because they got so close to the flames and it just overcame them. So these young men were thrown into the furnace. And, of course, they were expected to be immediately incinerated, but what happened was when people looked in, they saw them walking around in the fiery furnace, and there were not three figures, but there were four. There was an angel of God in there with them, okay? And so faith got them through. They were called out of the furnace. They came out completely unscathed, okay? And so spirit gave me the story to relate to you in that we're about to enter the furnace and it's going to seem hopeless so many people are going to feel like we have no hope and i want to share with you there is hope there is hope but it's going to take a tremendous amount of faith okay 
And faith isn't the only thing. There's another thing here, but let's talk about faith first because there's other qualities all wrapped up in faith. Okay, and the first thing is that faith. I was just, my father just shared with me an amazing definition of faith. And this is from some early Christian writings. And it was that faith is a dispassionate understanding. Okay, dispassionate understanding. And by understanding, I feel it meant like light, life, right? The, the all mind, the all is said to be a universal consciousness, right? And so the greater our understanding and knowledge of this universal consciousness, the closer we are to the divine, right? And so faith is a combination of that understanding and a mastery of the lower emotions, dispassionate, okay? So, so critically important right now to understand the emotional field and work with the emotional, the lower emotional field. This is the sacral center, okay? Sac sacral center right now is critical. All this stuff is happening, okay? The white snake, the black snake, the, you know, all the paths that take us away from, you know, the, the, the true sustaining path. And those are all based on pulling us off our truth through fear, right? And through the lower emotions, you know, fear, anger, rage, grief, shame, all those, okay? Those emotions are meant only, right, to, to call our attention to where things are off balance, right? And if we have a, a great enough understanding to understand what's going on, then we can notice those emotions, allow them to kind of flow through, and they will help us to realize where do we need to come back into balance, what needs to be addressed, okay? But when we don't have the understanding, then it's really easy for those emotions to carry us away and carry us off path, which ultimately leads to a dead end. It leads to um, death, basically, okay, in one way or another. And so we have to have both. We have to have the understanding and we have to be able to, to master those emotions. And by master the emotions, like I said, letting them fall through, being aware of them, and then bringing yourself back into the heart okay, uh, and into and that field of knowledge, because the heart here is the higher emotional center. We need the emotions because they're what trigger actions and to help us to, to actually take the actions that, that need to be taken, right? But when we can move from the lower emotional center into the heart, that's a critical part of faith and that's actually the act of love and unconditional love there are lots of different kinds of love okay so a lot of what people think of as love is what's known as eros it's the attachment kind of love right which is we feel really strongly romantic love but it can also be to other things we can have eros for our car right we feel like really attached to that car um and 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 that is a lower emotional expression of love right? But when we rise into the heart, we can access a type of love called agape, right? Which is this beautiful God consciousness kind of love. There's fraternal love as well, which is the brotherly love. This is a recognizing soul to soul, right? Agape is being the highest form of love, which is an actually dispassionate kind of love. It's just this emanation of incredible light, so cultivating those kinds of love, but dispassionately, we have to be able to, you know, feel those attachments and breathe, acknowledge them and bring ourselves back to center. Um, that recognition of death as part of the cycle of life, super important going forward here, right? We have to be able to allow other souls to follow their chosen path without clinging to them because if we are afraid of death in any 
way or sense that will bring us off the, the, the path of life. If we start fixating on death, and, and, and then we've gotten ourselves down into fear, okay? It takes us out of faith, and that's the fiery furnace, okay? Um, so to have faith in that fiery furnace, we have to be dispassionate and learn to really work with our emotional body and bring it up into that higher emotional body. It's super, super important. And um, that is also this power of unconditional love because... What I said I'd circle around to is that by choosing the path of life, even though at this point it it's it's going to be difficult, it's going to be a healing process, and it's probably going to be painful. But we have to recognize that if you do choose the path of life, that is a an act of devotion beyond yourself and beyond even humanity. It's an act of service to our beautiful Mother Earth and to the greater universe that is this ultimate act of love because somebody who is at that choice point where they've had that accident and they choose to go back it, it's it's inevitably i haven't fulfilled my purpose and my purpose is so connected with love a lot of times it's their family they need to go back because they have young children right or they have to fulfill, fulfill that mission of of their family or sometimes it's a i'm meant to go back and take this experience and share it and share this message of there's something beyond there's something more than just us okay because that's what this is about there's something more than just us and that we're here to serve life okay as humanity and all right so faith and love and hope <laughs> and the greatest of these is love right um Okay, and then finally, there's a little bit more to this Akashic message, and that is, I'm just going to quote here, there is power in story. The stories you tell yourself are not just to pass the time away. They are incantations. They are magic. The act of storytelling is an act of magic. A story becomes an anchor and a scaffold for the will to climb. Story becomes truth, especially when it is repeated often. Your will is strong. Insist on your power. Demonstrate your power. Okay, so star seeds. Now is the time to really step into our power. We step into it through faith, through love, through hope, right? And also through story, okay? Faith, love, and hope are the qualities. Story is the vehicle that we use, right? And, and that starts with vision. You can think of it as being the author now of creation and, and not just a player in creation, right? We have to step into author mode, right? And we are now writing the story. We're not just playing along and, you know, I'm, I'm the hero in the story and this happened and that happened and I had to react to it. No, we're the author as well. We're both, okay? And the author, actually, if, if you're a writer, you know this, the author often doesn't know when they start writing what all the adventures are going to be right they they the character comes to them and they start writing and and you know things sort of unfold from there it's an intuitive process but one thing that usually will be true is that the author will have an idea of and especially if it's it's a hero right that the hero will be victorious in the end right and so you have the starting point, right? And you have the ending point. And in between, things unfold through intuition. But it's super important at this point right now for us starseeds to visualize what are we moving towards, right? Yes, this is a portal. And, you know, yeah, we're moving towards birthing a new golden age. What does that actually look like, right? Okay, so I've been shared this before, I have this vision of the world. It's this beautiful, shining blue and green globe, and it is just radiating vitality. And all you can just feel the incredible energy coming off of this thing, vitality, life. This is the earth that we're creating right now, right? That's, that's, that we're in the point of moving towards this this healed whole earth right every being on it happy and free all and including humanity 
right? This is not an earth that does not include humanity. We're an integral part of it, right? So visualizing that, I've got that placed right here in my third eye. I invite you to also have this vision of the, the beautiful future earth, the one that we're birthing right now, okay? So story, and the story will unfold according to the strength of our vision and our faith and our will, okay? So vision super important holding that love essence and the faith is super important and then the third thing is cultivating our knowledge and our wisdom right because that is a large part of what has been lost what has been what we've been blinded to over the past millennia is the knowledge and the wisdom and that is actually the ancestral knowledge and wisdom we have it in our dna right if you've had any of that gnosis that you get the downloads right you get the intuition we have that within us it's in our dna that's why the dna is so important that's why it's being co-opted into transhumanism right but we need to really protect that because it is part of this whole ability to support life and the continuity of life right um but we have that knowledge within us but it's also passed down through us through the ancestral teachings and that is so super important so many of these teachings have been lost um but this is the time if ever there was to return to those ancestral teachings and to begin to re learn those because the and i'm talking the really really indigenous native very ancient ancient ancestral teachings tell us how to live okay and and how the world works um the the hermetic principles being part of that the hermetic principles really tell more explain how the universe works spiritually but but the ancestral knowledge tells us how to live within in a way that's that's harmonious and within those laws right how to be a lawful how to be how to be human right so finding whatever is left of the ancestral wisdom and knowledge and beginning to really not just learn about it but live it that is the path that is in that, that we have to take in order to get to this point of you know the, the the path of healing it won't be easy it won't be easy and it, you know it, it is a choice but i believe in my heart i believe so strongly and i have to believe right um this this is my personal path i've been told multiple times you're here for the reconstruction right and so uh, that just builds my faith in that I wouldn't be here and I wouldn't be told I'm here for the reconstruction if the reconstruction wasn't possible. Okay, so as much as this Armageddon is a path that we're hurtling along right now, I absolutely have hope and faith that we can overcome that, that we can bypass that danger. I also have hope and faith that we can we can step aside from this transhuman path as well or at least a critical amount of us to to reclaim life on earth here and bring us into a higher dimension on the planet i absolutely have faith that we can do it um if you do too please put that in the comment below and i invite you to really develop your personal vision of the new earth that we're building i feel like that is a super super important part of what we're here to do is really envision it's finding the new home it's finding home right and if you would like some assistance with that if you would like to gather together with like-minded souls to work on that vision i will be offering a free workshop later this month i'll be sharing a technique to to help you to create your vision for 2023 as well as the overarching vision for what you know the the new earth as well that link is below and you can just sign up for that if you're interested and then i wish you a wonderful new year 
happy 2023 and remember you were born to be free.